In this, our second lecture, you will see an example of how science is done. This science is a 2,000 years old science by Aristarchus of Samos. It's an example of how careful observations and a little bit of geometry that you may have done in seventh grade can be used to show what the size of the solar system is. Earth looks locally flat. The sky looks like a dome. We can use this fact for some simple measurements. The point directly above one's head is called zenith. The distance in degrees from zenith to any horizon is therefore 90 degrees. What the Greeks knew very well was how to take an angle and divide it by two, by three, etc. That's how they measured angles to very high precision. There is also a fairly rough estimate on, of angles that can use a body part. Well, by that I mean your fist or your hand at its stretched arm's length. Look at the picture below. Another theoretical trick that relies on the fact that Earth is round is to look at the location of the North Star Polaris from any place on Earth. If you look at Polaris and figure out that it's really very far away and use some middle school geometry, you can prove fairly easily that the distance above the horizon at which Polaris lies is exactly your own latitude. For example, if you're on the North Pole, Polaris will be directly above your head. Now that means that your latitude is 90. If you're on the equator, Polaris is on your northern horizon. That means you're at latitude 0. If you're halfway through, Polaris will be at half of 90 degrees, which is 45 degrees above the horizon. Therefore, you are at 45 degrees latitude north. We in Baldwin are somewhere between 38 and 39 degrees from the equator. Pythagoras was a Greek person that lived in the 6th century BC. He traveled to present-day Iraq, Babylon, and to Egypt, where he learned geometry, mathematics, and astronomy. He then, he then came back to Greece and established the Pythagorean school. Students telling about the revelations they learned in his school were supposed to have been executed. One of the things that he actually taught in his school was about the perfect solid that included a cube, a pyramid, and the most perfect of them all, a sphere. That was one reason that he thought that the earth was round. After all, that's the most perfect of the solid objects. In this slide, you can see a use of the Pythagorean theorem to find earth's radius. Try and plug the numbers into your calculator and see what you get. Then compare them to numbers available on the internet. The method that I'm describing below of how to find Earth's circumference is actually fairly straightforward. Assume, for example, that the distance between Alexandria and Cien in the picture below is a thousand kilometers. Now, further assume that the angle that this pizza slice spans is 10 degrees. 1,000 kilometers, 10 degrees. Now, how many degrees are there in a full circle? Obviously, 
360. That means that there are quite a few pizza slices in this pizza. How, how many pizza slices are there? Each pizza slice, as you recall, is 10 degrees. Obviously, that would be 36 pizza slices. Now, each of the crusts is a thousand kilometers long, therefore 36 pizza slice sli slices, sorry about that, each thousand kilometers long, that means 36,000 kilometers around Earth. Guess what, this is a pretty good number. The actual number for Earth is 40,000 kilometers. As a matter of fact, we're using miles and feet, but we're also using kilometers and meters. And the meter was invented by measuring the distance from the North Pole to the equator and dividing it by 10,000, that's going to give you a kilometer, and again by a thousand, that's going to give you a meter. On the left hand side, I'm describing a similar situation to Alexandria and Cien. The only difference is that it's happening right here. Think about a place, for example, in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe an oil rig, where the sun is directly above one's head on the longest day of the year. We are 15 degrees north of there. Now, if we know that this distance is 1500 kilometers, then we can do the same exact exercise. Try and find out how many pizza slices there are in this case. Still, what evidence do we have that the Earth is really round? Here, I'm going to go on a little tangent explaining about the phases of the moon because I want you to figure out that there is a difference between the phases of the moon and lunar eclipses. Now I'm going to go back and teach you about the phases of the moon next week again. For now it's sufficient to know that the phases of the moon are the result of the location of Earth, the Sun and the moon. For example, when the Earth is at 45 degrees from the moon, that is, the sun-earth line is at 45 degrees with the earth-moon line, then we're going to see a crescent moon, which means that the phases of the moon, such as crescent, half a moon, etc., are not created by any shadowing effect. In contrast with the lunar phases that take about 29 and a half days to be completed, lunar eclipses take no longer than a few hours, four to five hours at most. What happens during that eclipse is that the moon is eaten up. Look at the picture below and see how basically there is no such a thing as half a moon at any of those pictures. What's more, we only get lunar eclipses once every uh, couple of years. In this completely not to scale model, you can see how the shadow of the Earth is covering the Moon during an eclipse. This only happens every few years because usually due to the fact that the Moon's orbit is slightly tilted relative to our orbit around the Sun, we do not get eclipses at all. It's only when those orbits are lined up that we can get an eclipse. Here's what you should notice though. The shadow of Earth on the Moon is round. That is the main reason that we chose to think that the Earth was round. Again, a very brief reminder 
that there is a difference between eclipses and phases of the moon. Notice the shadow of Earth on the moon in the lower picture. Here is where the method of Aristarchus of Samos starts. Aristarchus commented that the size of the shadow of Earth that causes the eclipse is very similar to Earth's size itself. That's because the Sun, he assumed, was very far away. Now, that means that we know the size of the pizza crust. Only this time around the pizza is a much larger pizza. It's the orbit of the Moon around the Earth. The angle can be figured out from the fact that the lunar eclipse is four hours in length. That's the length during which there is totality of the eclipse. That's the longest possible eclipse that we know of. Now that is out of about 720 hours that it takes the moon to go once around the Earth. You could in principle do 4 over 720 to find out how many degrees each pizza slice has and then figure out the number of slices times the crust, divide by 2 pi, and you would get the distance to the moon. The last piece of the puzzle for Aristarchus was figuring out how to find the distance to the sun. In order to do that, Aristarchus noticed that in principle the phase of the moon where the phase looks like half a circle should happen exactly when the moon earth sun angle is 90 degrees that is if the sun is infinitely far away so that the line to the earth and the line to the moon from the sun are parallel now if the sun is not infinitely far away the angle of the Sun, Earth, Moon should be a little less than 90 degrees. You then could use trigonometry. Some of you may have done trigonometry, some of you may have not done trigonometry. At the time of Aristarchus, there was some sort of a preliminary trigonometric method. Aristarchus used that method to fi figure out the distance to the Sun. He found out, using that method, that the distance is about 20 times the distance of the Earth to the Moon, which we already found. Problem was that it's really 400 times. The reason that it's so hard to figure out is because that angle, that's the angle that's going to determine the distance to the Sun, is very, very nearly 90 degrees whereas Aristarchus assumed it to be 89, it's actually 89 and 6 sevenths. A consequence of Aristarchus' inaccuracy was the fact that right after him there was a fellow by the name of Archimedes. Yep, that's the guy that jumped out of the bathtub and shouted Eureka while running naked throughout the streets of Syracuse in Sicily. Same fella. Aristarchus wrote, wrote a book called The Sand Reckoner in which he shows that Aristarchus could not have been right because if Aristarchus is right then Earth should be going around the Sun in circles that are fairly tight. Those kind of circles will show us some other effects that have not been seen. As a result our idea that the sun is in the middle had to wait 1500 more years. And as usual, may you live long and prosper.